Shelby and I are on our way to the doctor to see about his wisdom tooth and hopefully make arrangements to have it surgically removed. The nice staff at the hospital in Alpine, I think it's called Regional, Reg, Regional Medical Center in Alpine, Texas, they informed me that it's much better to have your a, a wisdom tooth cut out versus pulled out because when it's pulled out it it leaves a gaping hole I, I think they refer to it as like a dry hole and it's much more painful and requires a lot more maintenance than having the tooth surgically cut out and that makes sense to me. I'm not f very familiar with it, but I want to go to the best route, the most comfortable route as I possibly can find for Shelby. Last night, we camped out at the, I think it's called the Flying J. Sometimes I refer to it as the Pilot, but the Flying J. And that's one of our favorite truck stops. And one of the reasons why it's our favorite, well, one thing, I mean, the staff is just always nice, professional, very, um, just very nice, very friendly, um, very helpful. And, you know, of, of course, all the stop stops, truck stops, they have everything you need. You know, there's plenty of food, there's plenty of gasoline, and the showers are beautiful. And I think the Flying J's um, showers are are the best as well um now this might be because we're in a bit of a different location than we our normal stops but here um the showers have gone up a little bit and Shelby and I we've camped out at different truck stops in different locations and they run different prices we've paid as little as five no no not five dollars as little as seven dollars and as much as Fifteen dollars depends on your location and um, which truck stop company you go to. Um, today, well, last night was the first time we paid seventeen dollars, but you know everything is going up and they may have had to go up. But the showers are wonderful. But my my um, unpleasant experience last night at the truck stop. That's what I want to talk about real quick. First of all, like I say, the the Flying J is my favorite um, truck stop to camp out at. And one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why is because they, they tend not to be located in residential areas. When a truck stop is located in residential areas, the reason why... Um, I try to avoid those because the locals that live in the in the local area, the local residents, they tend to go to the truck stop and pose as homeless people or, you know, disguise as people down on their luck. And in spite of everything that's being said about everybody and, and how, you know, everybody is talking bad about Americans. Americans are the most generous people on planet Earth. And these people um, that live in local areas and when a truck stop is in their vicinity, they would go to the truck stop, sit on the ground, you know, intentionally wear tattered clothes and, you know, just be unkempt and they want and you, they don't even have to ask for money. Most of the time they don't they're not asking for anything. They're just sitting there. And good Samaritans will walk by. I mean, yes, yeah, sure. Um 9 out of 10 people are going to walk by and you know, not even acknowledge them. But it's that one or two people and you have when you have 500 people walking by you within 2 hours and two out of 10 or one out of 10, you know, give you a dollar or give you 75 cents or, or whatever, give you a quarter. 
after four or five hours, you, you have, uh, I mean, you can do the math yourself. You have a substantial amount of money for a day's work. And so the thing that I find disappointing is that most of us, we feel like we're helping someone that's down on their luck. I've been down on my luck and it's, I despise it to the point that I don't even like to see someone else down on their luck. And even when I'm not in the best financial situation right now, um, we're stable. We have a stable income. We have a stable living conditions, but we're spending a lot of money right now. Um, because of this wisdom tooth that's given my son, um, all his, all the problems is, is giving him pain and, um, it, it needs to come out. We had to, we had to drive 300 miles for a doctor that could see him today versus um, waiting till Friday or next week. And, you know, and so when you're away from home, you still have to eat. You, you know, you, you just have all these expenses. And um, so we're not in the best situation under our normal, uh, under our normal circumstances. But what I decided to do when I saw this, um, this old guy and um, you know, he was up in age. He probably much younger than he looked because he had all his hair basically covering his entire face. And then he had a cap, you know, pretty much coming down over his eyes. But he looked like, you know, just an, an old homeless guy sitting on the ground with his dog. And um, I had just pulled up in the van and I just decided that I was going to give him my coin purse. I. I have a, I had a coin purse that, um, I just carried around with me everywhere, I, you know, everywhere I, we go. And usually once I get it filled up or half filled, I would, um, take it into the house and empty it into a jar. You know, I'm saving coins and, um, you know, coins add up. And so long story short, I hadn't emptied it in a while. The coin purse was filled to the rim, basically mostly with quarters. And um, I know it was at least one silver dollar in there, but um, it was 95% quarters. And I would say going by, judging by how much that would, you know, being filled like it was, I would say it was at least, at least, 20 25 maybe even 30 dollars in it because it was filled to the rim and i i just never got around to um emptying it out emptying it empty empty in it out and so anyway um so i just said you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna bless this guy with this coin purse so as i got out of the van and i walked over there to him and he had this big pretty dog with him and I, you know, I just handed him the coin purse and he, you know, he said, thank you. But, um, I guess I stood in place a little too long because then he started using profanity, not actually cussing at me, but just, you know, he was like having a conversation with me, but every other word was like a profanity. And then, you know, he just, just attitude like kind of came over him and we happened to be parked right in front of where he was sitting I turned the lights off of the van so the headlights would be disturbing him and his dog but um so I wasn't in really in any rush at that time because we were waiting on our number to be called for the showers so I had a few minutes to kill so I was just kind of standing there talking to him a little bit you know after I gave him $30 worth of quarters so I guess I didn't think about it until after I walked away because I always have things I need to do. Like instead of wasting the two minutes that I spent talking to him, I could have been, you know, sorting our clothes out and, you know, getting ready, getting everything prepared to go into the shower. But um, after I stepped away from him and I started um, getting prepared to go inside the, you know, the... Um, the flying J it dawned on me oh he wanted me to move along so other people he didn't want me to stand there so you know and slow other people down from giving him money as well and so you know 
I, I I know I always knew that like some people panhandle, I, some people call it begging for money. Technically it's panhandling because, and I would say, I would use the term panhandling because most of the time these days, people don't even ask you for money. They just, well, they ask you for money by deception, you know, by looking homeless and looking like they're down on their luck when they're actually not. They, they actually just walked two blocks from their apartment complex or, you know, they just stepped out of their vehicle. In this case, this guy, he, he had his own vehicle there. So he was just sitting on the ground to collect money. He wasn't like so down on his luck that it, him and his dog had to just sit on the sidewalk. You know, he was doing it as a, as a business. And so he was conducting his business and therefore he wanted me to move along. And I just thought it was, it was, I was very disappointed because he was very, un, I don't need him to be grateful, grateful, but at least have some grace. You know what I'm saying? You know, somebody just gave you, you know, a little, a wallet full of coins, a, a wallet full of quarters or whatever, or just, even if it was just $1, somebody just, a total stranger just put some money in your hand. It seemed like you would be a little more gracious, you know, or, or gracious period. And, but not only was he not gracious, gracious, but he was rude and, you know, and vulgar and everything. So I've decided for me, I'm never walking up to a stranger and putting money in their hand ever again, because you don't know what type of people these are. You don't know if this is just their way of making extra money or this is just their way of, you know, they're not actually, not all of them. They're actually not down on their luck. They're just doing this because it's easy to do. And I found too, the most people that sit around in high traffic areas waiting for people to give them money, they're not down on their luck. This is just their hustle. This is just an, an, another means of income versus actually being down on their luck. And I think the difference, the reason why it makes a great difference, because most of the people that give these people money don't have a lot of money themselves. The $30 that I gave him in quarters, I could have used in the laundry room. I was not aware because this um, last night was the first time I did laundry at the Flying J. And I didn't know that the laundry was $4 per washer. And, and also the dryers are $4 too. So I had two loads of clothes. Um, actually, I had three, but the washing machines was so huge that I was able to um, do everything with just two loads. So that's two washers, two dryers. That was $16, you know, that I could have just used that coin. Had I known that he was just doing that as a side hustle, I would have kept my coin purse filled with quarters and did my laundry with it. But that's neither here nor there because, um, you know, I have nice people doing nice things for me and saving, saving me money, giving me money and a lot more than $30. You know, some people, they do things for me that save me hundreds of dollars, sometimes even thousands of dollars a, um, a month. So, um, I'm not, the, the $30 is not an issue, but it was, it was just like the attitude, the unpleasant experience that I had, I could have did without that. I would, so I would never, so he, he cured me. I would never walk up on a stranger and put money in their hand, you know, again, you know, and plus that $30, I could have, whether it was $30 or $25 or whatever it was inside the coin purse, I could have tipped out my favorite waitress, you know, I could have tipped out my favorite mechanic, you know, and, you know, just to, other than that, other, other than me naively going to him and giving him my coin purse filled with quarters, it was a beautiful evening. It was a beautiful night. Um, Chevy and I, we um, had a wonderful hot showers. Um, we had, um, we got our laundry done and all our clothes are clean and folded and everything. The staff inside, um, the Flying J is very nice. And, um, they look out for my son Shelby. They know he's artistic. And so they just kind of keep their eyes out. Um, 
And sometimes Chevy, he like to drift off to himself. He just kind of like leave me behind or something like that. Or he'll stay behind while I'm loading the van instead of staying with me. And um, I don't have to worry about him because I know the staff know us and they know Shelby. So um, it's a safe place for us to be. But yeah, but as far as going to total strangers, especially when you can use your money yourself and, or you can give the money to someone more deserving because I've always been the type of person to um, give money. You know, even when I, even when we were pretty much down on our luck, there has been times where I was down on my luck, but it seemed like the person next to me was in even in a even worse situation like one time we was at the store and we were actually buying something to eat and um you know we didn't have a problem we we you know you know how it goes we, you know we could afford food but we were just overall having it wasn't our best financial situation at that time but there was people in the parking lot that couldn't even afford food. They couldn't even afford to buy a couple of sandwiches. And I shared what Shelby and I had with them. And most people, and I believe these people at that time, they were really down on their luck. Um, Virginia had just got hit by um, Hurricane Isabel, I believe that was in 2003. And a lot of people were displaced. A lot of people were staying in hotels that you know, weren't staying in hotels before. So, um, but yeah, the, just that unpleasant experience I could have did without. And that has taught me because people are getting more and more uncivilized. And so he has cured me from going up to strangers and putting money in their hands. I would never do that again because one thing, like I said, I have a whole line of people that I rather that I could have gave that $30 to, you know, that, that actually pro provides service for me. And I could have used that as tip money for them. And so I think I wanted to make this video because to just make people a little bit more aware that everybody that appeared to be down on their luck is not. And in fact, most people that's down on their luck are not accustomed to asking public just going, you know, going out into the public um, high traffic areas and waiting for money, you know, just sitting on the ground and waiting for money, you know, waiting for people to give them money or asking the public for money. Most people that have lived legit lives and some, you know, not necessarily work because we still have our moms and stuff out there. Everybody that have children can hold down a job too. That's going to be another video. But I'm talking about those that have lived a legit life and just, this is one of those times, you know, they just experience in a time where they're, it's a bee trying to get in here, where they're trying to, um, they're just experiencing a, a time where they're down on their luck. They're not accustomed to asking for money. Not only are they not accustomed to it, they you know, they're not comfortable with it. And they really don't even know how it goes. But you just have these people... So just be aware, you, we have people that just um, pretending to be down on their luck, taking advantage of our good nature and how Americans and are very generous. And most Americans are. We're generous people. We're compassionate people. We don't mind helping each other out, regardless of what the media is, is saying. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm amongst the public. You know, I, I'm at these places, I'm at these truck stops and hotels and, you know, grocery stores and whatnot. Most people are very nice and they're very um, compassionate. So just be aware that you have people out here that's just taking advantage of your good nature. <laughs>